Good evening everyone. Well, you've caught me with what should be a national obsession and that is trying to fight the first signs of mildew. I know I've banged on about this in, the, in past videos, but really it can be devastating to a vineyard. It doesn't just affect vines, it can affect anything in your vegetable patches and things like that. But mildew is a horrible, horrible fungus to have in a vineyard in particular because it will completely destroy your yield. So I'm going to go on a, a mildew hunting expedition today and I've got my backpack which uh, is now full of potassium bicarbonate and I've measured it out and dosed it so I've got a really nice sort of good strong uh, potassium bicarbonate um, uh, solution in the backpack here and the reason why I'm not doing it with the air sprayer that I normally use is because I want to get absolutely every single um, berry uh, or in this case uh, grape that I can find and just cover everything. With the air spray it's very good as a quick sort of preventative um, general you know sort of catch-all but it might just miss one or two grapes which are hiding behind um, you know the odd leaf here and there. So I've got my uh, trusty uh, lance and my backpack sprayer so I'm going to go off and see if I can find some mildew. Now somebody very helpfully said and they were absolutely correct that if you've got enough airflow around the grapes then you, mildew really shouldn't be an issue and I would 100% agree with you if you were in a nice hot country like uh, France, Spain, America, South America, New Zealand, Australia, anywhere like that. But in the UK we have um, a particular set of problems and it uh, all really can be summed up by saying it's the weather. Uh, we have a very damp climate here in the UK uh, which is unfortunate uh, in many respects especially when you come and try and do any type of farming it's a blooming nightmare to be honest and it means that even if you do absolutely everything right and I'd be my, hold my hand up and say that we don't do everything right here I, I know that but we try and get the basics right um, even if you've got a good airflow and it all is exposed to the uh, sunshine um, we still get mildew. It's just going to be in the air. It's inevitable, unfortunately. So we just have to spot it and treat it as soon as we see it. Uh, so anyway, we'll see if we can find one. It won't take long to find mildew, um, but it's what we do about it that counts. Now, I hope you can see this, but here's a small bunch uh, that's developing. Uh, most of them seem absolutely fine, uh, to be honest. We've got a few little small ones here, which uh, is down to another reason, but uh, we'll come out to that maybe on another video. But here, is one which has got mildew just developing on one side of the grape. Um, it's okay on that side, but on this side we've got mildew. Um, I'm just going to pick it off because we don't really want it anyway. But uh, that is what we're looking for. Um, and that's just one grape. If left, it will infect the whole bunch and uh, we'll be um, basically snipping that one off and um, just trashing it basically. So that's what we're looking for. It won't take long before we find another one. If I can uh, find another one to show you as well. Here's uh, another example. We've got uh, most of the bunch there is absolutely fine. We've just got one just there, which is just starting to develop mildew on where my thumb is there. And, um, and actually there's another one just there as well. This is not a disaster, but we want to sort of nip it in the bud straight away. I'm just gonna pick these ones off, but actually the reason why I've got the sprayer is that we want to treat them rather than going around the thousands of uh, grapes that we've got and picking off individual ones which isn't really going to help I'm going to spray all of this lot and um, make sure that everything has got a really good coating of potassium bicarbonate on it there's lots of fungicides you can use for mildews and things like that but one of the reasons why I'm using potassium bicarbonate at the moment is because unlike a lot of other fungicides which are used to prevent mold from even developing in the first place things like um, you know lime sulfur and some of the uh, proprietary chemicals or man-made chemicals that you can buy and in some countries things like Bordeaux mix which is uh, also a preventative um, copper based uh, fungicide. Potassium bicarbonate works in a slightly different way. Um, it attacks basically all parts of the uh, fungus and it does it um, partly by desiccating it. It dries the, um, the mould out completely and, and kills it that way. It means that the fungus, and in this case mildew, can't really build up much of a resistance because of the mode of action that potassium bicarbonate has on the mildew. That's why it's used um, not only as a preventative but also as a curative 
um, substance and that's what I'm hoping will work this time round. Now I'm using a fairly concentrated, uh, well for the purposes of this anyway, I'm using a fairly concentrated solution of potassium bicarbonate around about 150 grams per 10 litre, 15 grams per litre roughly. And um, for in research papers that I've read anyway, uh, they mention anything between 5 and 20 grams per litre. So 15 is at the sort of upper end of that. So I'm just going to uh, sort of see if we can get some results by using that level of concentration. Well, some people would say, why um, do you get such a problem with certain varieties than others? And uh, it's absolutely true. Some varieties of vine are a lot more resistant to mildew than others. The Bacchus ones, which I'm doing at the moment, is really susceptible to mildew. So why on earth we chose that variety? I've no, <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, it is susceptible. Um, it does, uh, you know, I don't know, just it seems to attract mildew um, at a moment's notice. There are other varieties like the Ron and Orion um, grapes that we've also got here in the vineyard that are a lot more resistant to mildews. It's not to say they won't get it, it, they just seem to be a little bit more resistant to it. So if it's a real problem in your area, maybe just do a little bit of research beforehand as to which varieties have got some kind of resistance to mildew and you will save yourself a lot of time and hassle as far as that's concerned anyway. Here's another little um, pest we don't really want, but uh, fortunately we have a device to get rid of them. Pet, molehill. There's a good girl. All right, enough, enough, enough. Well done. That was a good job. <laughs> I don't mind moles so much in a vineyard. They don't attack the vines at all. They don't eat the grapes. They don't attack the roots or anything like that. Um, and in a funny sort of way, I think I, I always think that they provide a little bit of drainage to the uh, the vineyard, especially in sort of fairly clay soils that we've got here, sort of underground. Um, uh, tunnels or whatever just to basically break up the uh, the ground a little bit and just let that water flow through a bit more. Um, I don't know whether it's just a, a in my own mind that's what's happening but I always like to think that that's what's happening so uh, so long as they're not completely destroying everything I don't really mind the odd mole here and there and um, Pepper the dog likes to jump on the uh, mole hills so that always uh, adds a little bit of entertainment to the day as well. Also, just a huge thank you to my Patreon members who have been absolutely fantastic in supporting this channel in the Patreon site. Just for a few dollars per episode or per month, it's totally up to you. You can support me in this channel and I really, really appreciate it. So have a look on the link in the description uh, for the Patreon link and maybe I'll see you over there. Anyway, back to this video. Now, something else is happening in the vineyard that's really important. It's the process called the raison or Verizon or not quite sure of the exact pronunciation but it's a French word and essentially it means that the grapes are starting to go through a significant change. In red grapes it's really obvious because they go from a green colour to a red colour and it's essentially where the chlorophyll is being replaced by another chemical called anthocyanin which uh, in red grapes is what gives it its colour. More importantly though it's the process where the sugar content starts to go up quite dramatically and the acidity starts to go down quite dramatically and and of course, as uh, vineyard owners or winemakers, what we're really interested in is that sugar content come harvest time. Now, there's a really simple test you can do to determine how much sugar you've got in your grapes. And you've probably seen these before. This is a refractometer. It's really easy. It doesn't require any batteries or anything like that. But all you do is you just lift up the flap, get your little grape. It's probably best to take a, a sample of, um, you know, 20 or so grapes so you get an average. But I've just chosen one here. And you literally just put a little bit of grape juice on the, uh, the lens there, close the lid like so, and then you just look through it. And you'll just have to trust me uh, on this for a second, but um, you read the level and the, uh, the, ch the scale inside, and it's called a brick scale. It gives you a percentage of sugar. And on this one here, it's uh, reading round about 16%. That means the grapes got around about 16% sugar and as a very very rough rule you can halve that figure to give you your rough finished alcohol content in your wine. So if you've got a 24% sugar content very roughly speaking you're going to get 12% alcohol in your wine. So come harvest time we're going to be testing all of these, um, not all of these grapes obviously but a, you know a selection of the grapes to see what the uh, percentage sugar is going to be and we're going to be looking for around about 22 to 24% before we harvest. Now 
they say that as soon as Verizon, Verizon, however you pronounce it, um, has, has been has done, it's turned into red looking grapes, you've got roughly 30 to 60 days maximum before harvest time. I think realistically we're looking at the end of September for the Rondo grapes here. So I'm going to uh, just have to make sure that we've got all the buckets and clippers and people on hand to give us a help when we come to harvest. So it comes around ever so quickly. By the way, um, red grapes require a little bit higher sugar content than the white variety. We've got a way with getting um, the Bacchus grapes in years gone by up to about 21%, 20, 21% there or thereabouts, and it's been absolutely fine. That's given us a 12% wine at the end of it. The red grapes, I think we could probably go a few percentage points higher. That's probably it for this video so i hope you've enjoyed it if you have click the like button and the subscribe and put a comment in the section below it really helps the channel out and uh, i'll be really interested in how you're getting on and your plans for your vineyard if you're going to start one so until the next one have a good week and i'll catch you later bye for now